My name is Zach Griffith. I am obsessed with hunting big game on their turf and their terms. When I need motivation to push myself, there's certain guys that I feel raise the bar. You're about to meet each of them. These are my hit list. So far on the hit list, I've showed a bunch of my buddies that I look at as peers with exceptional skills. This next guy though, he's on a whole different level. If anything, I would say he's more of a mentor or even a legend. Jason Carter is by far the most badass mule deer hunter I've ever met. Jason is the Ridge Reaper of Under Armour Camo. He had an awesome network television show that captured some epic moments in western big game hunting. Jason is the most successful mule deer hunter out there and has a collection to show for it. He has so many deer over 200, I'm not even sure he's kept track. He seems to specialize in the desert terrain, but I don't have a question. You put the guy anywhere in North America, he'll find and kill the biggest deer in the area. Jason's actually really humble. I had to prod a lot to get him talking. But one thing you'll see from this video is he knows his stuff. I love how matter of fact Jason talks. His confidence, his persistence, his experience are what have put these big deer on the ground. Once you've seen these deer from his past, you'll be as excited as hell about what's to come in the future. So here he is guys, a fellow Team Hoyt guy and the Ridge Reaper, Jason Carter. Look at that. That's legit. It's about 500 inches. What's hey, up, big dog? What's going on? Look at that shirt. I like right. that. Yeah, how are you guys? Good. This how is you? you. This nice is to meet you. This is, we had Ryan Carter the other day, so she keeps calling you Ryan and him Jason. I'm like, no, no, this is Jason. Yeah, I keep getting mixed up. Original. I'm not even sure we're related. I don't know. Maybe a little ways down the line. Yeah. So? <laughs> Maybe. You, uh, he's from he's from Utah County, so it's possible, I guess. Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah. I, uh, man, I'm so stoked you let me come by. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Have you watched any of the hit lists at all? Uh, I saw one the other day when you were kind of hitting me up about it. I it's was like, cool. I don't even know what that is. It's, dude, it's super casual. Like, I really, truly, like, there's just guys that I just think are badass. And yeah. I wanted, a lot of them are just, the, you know, the kids like Sean Morgan, Average Joe guys. Yeah. And then there's guys like you that are industry guys that I literally yeah. respect. Yeah. Whether you're on TV or not. Yeah. Because I knew who you were way before Under Armour. Right. And I've always heard. So, um, you're, um. Uh, do you mind like giving a little bit of background about you and kind of? Yeah, I can, um, you know, basically, I mean, I graduated college and went to work. We started the hunting full back in 1996 um, and just cranked from there. I used to guide, you know, because we didn't make a lot of money. And yeah. So we were newly, newlywed and I guided some of the bigger tags a lot just so I could put my hands on big animals and learn how to hunt big animals. You Mostly Utah? Yeah, I did Nevada too. I so was you got Southwest Nevada, Nevada, Nevada Strip? Yeah, Southwest Desert. No, I didn't do this trip. I did like basically out west. So Nevada, because, you know, my theory is I want to guide places that I can hunt when I'm done guiding. <laughs> so it's hard, you know, man. So like I learned Nevada by guiding. Right, trial and error. And then now I can get tags in Nevada, landowner or draw or whatever. Whereas the Strip, I mean, you're going to hunt once in your life. There's no way to get them. The fa There's no fast track. Right? Yeah, and so yeah, you can go guide it, but... You're not really learning for you. You're just learning for your clients, which is which is fine and it's good. And you get to put your hands on big deer, but you know there's other places that have big deer too. That's such a simple like insight that's so obvious, but like so foreign to most guys. Okay, I mean it makes so much sense. You're like I'm busting ass out here. Clients are going to benefit, but when it comes to my turn, I'm going to just hammer. Yeah, I knew there was a time coming when. I'm not gonna be broke forever. Yeah, yeah. no, I might be able to afford some gas, yeah. you know. And uh, so anyway, I knew things would change at some point, hopefully within 15, 20 years. And so, and I still get to go out there, and I still take one or two guys, um, you know, on special special tags. But you're you're busy with your stuff because oh, I know how much time and you're scouting. Right. Like, yep. How many trail cameras are you running out in your units? I mean, I I run a lot of cameras because it's you're I, talking I run desert, six, so it's yeah. vast. Yeah, I run six days a week, gym, you know, plus or minus. I mean, I got kids and stuff, and but you know, six, five, six days a week. That's so cool. From June fifteenth to. You grow up in Cedar whole life. Pretty much. I mean, I, we lived in Moab till I was twelve years old. Oh, right on. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Did that, and then moved into Harmony, and then Minersville, Cedar, and you know, I graduated from high school actually here in Cedar. So. Nice. Did you play sports. Yeah, I swam actually. No way. Nice. I've been like middle linebacker for sure. 
was like a ping pong. I was no, I sw- yeah, I swam and uh, uh, we did well. We had a good swim team. We freaking cranked. Um, it was somewhat popular here. And yeah, no, no, so no, yeah, it was good. Um, it's physical as crap. I, pe- I mean, it's physical, but oh, I learned. Yeah, I tried did some triath or sprint tries. Yeah. Oh my gosh, swimming just buried me. I can run all day, but not swim. Yeah, yeah, no, not a lot of people can't swim, but. But anyway, that's what I did in high school, and then college, I, just, I didn't do anything. I just uh, went to school, graduated in finance. So. so now you did you did Under Armour Ridge Reaper. So yeah, first. fast forward, basically, come to 2012, I uh, approached Under Armour. I wanted to do a TV show. Um, I wanted them to be the title sponsor, uh, and, and I knew the guys there, and I figured they'd be on board. But by the time we got done with it, they wanted to do their own TV show, but have me host it. I didn't know anything about TV, and so it was probably, it's by far the smartest thing I ever did, because it probably ate me up. You yeah. Know? There's not money in TV. It's, obviously, you There's changed no paths. Yeah, yeah. I figured you'd be doing it if it yeah. was working. Yeah, Well, it's not that. They they changed um, so they could own the production more. Like, production costs were brutal. The airtime was brutal. And so they're now going to digital, which all the kids, Under Armour's built for kids. Yeah. And kids aren't watching TV anymore. You're talking kids like, you know, 20s. Yeah, 20s, yeah. 30s. I'm 35, but. Yeah, 20s and 30s, they're not watching TV really, so they're, you know, and it's easy. Everybody's just on their device running YouTube and stuff. Sure. And you don't have to have 22 minutes with X amount of commercials. You don't and, have to wait till Friday at 7. Right, nothing. It's all on demand. It's all on demand. It's free, too. And, and so, yeah, it's free, but then, too, they can dictate how long it's going to be, how many episodes, you could do 30 episodes, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And so anyway, that's where the future's headed and so that's where they're transitioning. So I'm still contracted with them, they still film and... Dude, your stuff, man, I mean, uh, it's one thing to kill big deer, but you guys, I mean, the way you capture, like your desert buck, I've watched that video 20 times. Yeah. Just when he comes out of that cedar, I mean, you are so close, and you guys framed it. Your camera guy's awesome. Yeah, Chris is awesome. Oh, my gosh. Like, I can't believe you got two dudes in that close yeah. on that buck and yeah. that kind of crap. Yeah. Crunchy. Yep, but we were there for a lot of days, too. Yeah. Like, there's, and that's the thing. What I don't know which desert. Are you talking about the big inline buck? Yeah. That was recent? Yeah. Yeah, we got lucky and killed him on the first day. First I know. Yeah. I heard, you know, it usually takes, like, four or five. No, it does. Normal. It does. I yeah. know, yeah. The deer, I was thinking you were thinking the big forks buck, and, and that deer was quite a few days and quite a few stalks. But, anyway, I've been fortunate. So now the Epic Outdoors, is that your... So fast your... forward to, yeah, we're still doing, I still work with Under Armour. Now we're doing Epic Outdoors with my partners, uh, Chris, John, and Adam. And uh, we're all a part of it. I don't own it solely. Okay. And it's cranking. So that's your YouTube name. Your YouTube channel is called Epic Outdoors, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, everything. I'll link it all, just making sure you guys know yep. where to look. And then Epic Outdoors, the brand itself, are you guys an online publication? No, it, well, we do have like the January issue online. Is it tag service and stuff like that? Yeah, okay. tags, hunts. Just information. Information, everything to do with Western Big Game Hunting. Very cool, very yeah. cool. All right, man. This is why we came. <laughs> I, this I have, is just a few of them. I, oh, I know, oh, God. God. <laughs> Rockette, I'm telling you. What? <laughs> my, dear, you. my kids each have a 200 incher in their room, and then I've got down at the office, I've got three or four of them, and then i got a couple upside down on the rack out here. No way. Yeah, just good, solid deer, but oh at my some point, gosh. you may qualify. Yeah, well, at some point, you know. But these are some of my favorite deer. I, I mean... You know, that one I stripped out of the velvet and then it was just, I, and I shouldn't have. And so I went to put velvet back on. I sent it back east anyway. And, you know, it, it's okay, but I'd never strip one. Like, don't strip your box. If you can, yeah. Yeah, because it's, you know, it, it's not ever quite the same. But So do you mind, like, breaking them? I mean, that stag. Yeah, like, this epic. stag's probably, it's like a 249 inch, you know, but it's, oh, but it's a stag, so it's not a real buck. Like, I mean, stags are cool. I, I like stags. I needed one. Yeah. yeah. But I'll probably never shoot another one. She started off with one. Yeah, she shot yeah. a 190 stag. And they're awesome. Badass to me. He has the semblance of a frame. Like yeah. it's a it's a mule. He's got eye guards, beams. Yeah, he's got beams. He's, and then he's just a meltdown. But there's stuff you can't see on the backside. Like he's just a crazy deer. But he's so. nuts. He'd actually be interesting. I'd love to see how they score that thing. I mean, I could see the beams. Which I could see one the, inch points. Yeah, I guess right. I mean, it's just 
whether they count a frame or not, either way, you, everything gets a length measurement. So what do you do with those bases for circumferences when they're so pearled out like that? You just, it's before the main eye guard and then after the main eye guard, the smallest circumference. The so smallest. they just go over the box? No, they I mean, you know, they don't the go smallest too. place you can get a tape yeah. in there. Cool. So they just run it tight as yeah. kind of curl it yeah. over. I mean, I don't know, like, I mean, A, it's not, you know, I mean, it's a stack, so like you would never, to me, I wouldn't have it officially scored, you know? No, it's not what it is. Mm -hmm. So this one's a, a haul. Yeah, this is my Arizona deer. I mean, I killed him. I mean, that's my once lifetime tag that we're talking about where if you're guiding down there, you can only hunt once, but. He's so wet. <clears throat> he's a uh, right 271 and a half inch deer. That's your best deer. Official, yeah. yeah. Nets like 262. And I mean, here's some sheds off me. Oh, cool. That are, you know, I mean, just massive. massive. Look at the beam. Oh like, it's God. just, it's like a coo shed, yeah. but it's a muley. Yeah. There's another set up there that's bigger. I mean, did you find them or did you? Yeah, me and my buddy. Oh, nice. I did find them. Anyway. Yeah. What's he about 240 here? He's like 225, I think, on this one. And then that single up there is. So actually, Steve Stater found that single and traded me out. Stater's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> to give me a shit, my shit off my deer. Was yeah, because awesome. it didn't mean as much to him, obviously. No, to him, out. it was just bone. You yeah, know? so but it's big bone. I mean, did you did you baby get a shot at the webbing? Like, I mean, it's I don't know how that deer rubbed that velvet off. Yeah. it's got so much <laughs> going on. Were you? Did you get him on trail cam and everything? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't know. We didn't know this deer existed until we hunted. Oh no. Right. We ran by yeah, yeah. We ran by Adam Bronson just chasing a doe. <laughs> That's yeah. how the strip is. Yeah, yeah. They come out of nowhere. Anyway, and just uh you know, it took us three or four days to get him killed. That's a Nevada buck? No, that's a <coughs> Utah deer. Oh right on. Um actually he was facing me at like twenty one yards, he wouldn't or twenty three yards, he wouldn't move. He was feeding on milkweed. Yeah. Anyway, and I just finally, I started to shake. It was two minutes of holding the draw. I started to shake, and I just, where you would take your pulse in your neck, your carotid artery. Shot right for the carotid. You can see, like, right here, there's blade marks right here in the crease of the neck. Oh, just and stoned just him. Went, well, and it went all the way through and came out clear back by his Oh, so he's, yeah, done. Took 20 yards. Yeah. That's a really cool mount. I like how tight he kept the form. Yeah. Just, yeah, and then that's Brutus, of course, you know. He's a legend. That, that's a buck I really wanted to see. In fact, of all your deer, I don't know why, that's the buck I remember even more than this one. Yeah. I just think it's just the mass. I don't know. It's it's silly, dude. I mean, that's... It's, it's, it's retarded. It really is. Look how dark that cape is. Yeah, he's a 250-inch deer, you know. Oh. I mean, he's just a stud. And that's right here on Jim. Yeah, that's a general season. Yeah, both those bucks live together. Oh, my Both gosh. those bucks. And... That year, I couldn't, he disappeared on me, so I shot this deer. And then the next year, he was back. Wow. And that other deer's an Idaho deer. Killed him last year. Killed that deer. 220. Oh, right on. He's got a lot going on. How did he not break up? He's got nothing but, <laughs> right I guess on. it was pre rut. Yeah, it was pretty October. much pre rut, yeah, end of October. That's and that's the Forks deer. We were that, yeah, about. that's that's a really cool front. Well, so what are those G two or G fours on him? The G I can't remember. Probably twelve and a half or thirteen. Those are just towers. They're good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Big eye guards. Just Another solid. great. Who's your taxidermist on? That, that's uh, Troy Trim. That that's fantastic. Yeah, he does good work. He hasn't done all these, but he's done some some of the good ones. I like I like the muleys with the really bony. Now it's like because I just that's the way it looked to me. I don't know. It's, well, he's in the desert. And, sure, drier. Yeah, kind of. and it's just they're thin. I mean, it, it, he looked like that. So and there's a look at the Roman on that sucker. <laughs> he's that's an angry bastard. Yeah. <laughs> that's a Colorado deer. <laughs> yeah. He went like two twelve. Of course, he's got the inline in the back on both backs and big old frame too. He's a good deer. Yeah. That's that's got to be Sonora. Yeah, that was Mexico. Holy crap! I killed a. Wide, I got a wide, 215 wide. that's not mounted yet, but I mean, I've killed some good deer in Mexico. What's that net score? I don't remember. He doesn't net book just because the eye guards and you see how his G2s are a little yeah. mismatched. G4s are a little mismatched. Oh, well, it oh. takes to net book typical, you don't realize how much it takes. It takes a good deer. Yeah. It takes a big, big deer. It takes a lot of, everything has to fall in place, mm -hmm. right? Everything. 
and eye guards are free inches. Like if they don't have eye guards, I mean, and you want to book beer, you might really consider it's not nuts. shooting because you can't. Times it's hard to make them in. Yeah, because it adds uh, up. A one ninety deer is so damn big. Like mm -hmm. I just, it's unreal. What about this one? That's, That's the older one. Yeah, and he, I killed him in two thousand five. Uh, he grows like 209. I shoot and see the hole, the notch in his ear. Oh yeah, I sh that's a muzzler. And I actually, <laughs> he was, I was above him at 35 yards, and I shot straight down, and it went through his ear and into his chest. Oh right. Oh, wow. so, so you rocked him. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and and uh, he was a cool deer. That was that's good deer. He's got a lot of history to him. You can see all these scarring on his. Oh yeah, stars. Lion or yeah, it could have been a lion. He was one I watched. Would look above a bowler every time he'd go to bed. He would just walk around bowlers and stare above him like a lion had been on him. He knew. He'd probably been snagged once. So this one over here, that is that a replica or the actual? Yeah, skull? those are just replicas. That one, I helped that Tyler Raymond. Go get in close. Kill that deer in uh, New Mexico last went last January. Was that an auction tag? Yeah. Or? yeah. Yeah, just a replica. I mean, he, those guys are good to me, you know, and very cool. I, I actually, he went 280, 279. <laughs> this deer is a replica, and we killed him this year with Reed Miller. Oh, right, right. In Nevada. Right. Yeah, Nevada. So. Yeah, my boss is Jason Yates. Yeah. He's always telling me about, he, I know he got a tag, he's always telling me about Reed and all his hogs. Yeah. yeah. That's a moose, man. I can't a good believe deer. the mass. Yeah, I didn't see that mass in the photos. No. But anyway, and then in here, like, my first giant, I mean, big, big deer. I killed a 200 inch in the late 90s, but then I went like a dry spell until 2003 and killed this deer. Holy mainframe. He's a 206 frame, <laughs> Nets 203 frame, and then let's see, he has, I don't know, whatever. He ended up grossing like 237 Nets 234. And these are his sheds. I picked him up like I saw one. An hour before I killed him. No way. Then glassed up the other one and then picked him up on the way out. Oh, that's after so After I awesome. shot him I, in the dark. And oh, there's managed. no doubt. Look at the bleeding. I mean, that's 100% yeah. that same. Well, and you can see how the G3s rock in. Yeah. On both sides. Dude, he's so, made I mean, out of stone. Look how, like, honed that is. Yeah. That is all flat. Cool. So, you know, I mean, he's wanting to split everywhere and go crazy, but he's just young. And then this year he split everywhere, but he still wants to. Like... I still think he would have been bigger, you know. <sighs> would anyway. you say he's six or seven there? Yeah, he's probably. I, I he might be four and a half on the sheds, five and a half on. No the No way. Yeah. Oh my. He gosh. was a young deer. I mean, he could have been a. When, when, what's your take on Southern Utah, Nevada? What's the What's the prime time? When can they hit their their peak? And I know. I think like six to nine years. Six old. to nine. So there's a three. I would year say a seven eight year old deer. I mean. I feel bad when they're five and a half years old, although you don't pass deer like this, no. but I feel bad about it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you'd like to see what could have come of him. Yeah. So on your 270 strip buck, did, why did he blow up so much? With all, you were, was it a So that was two years prior. This shed, there's a shed that we didn't look at on top of the safe. Okay. That was pretty much the same score. Okay. As the, so filled in the gaps. So yeah, so then that, he would have, he was that size two years in a row. That deer's an ancient deer. I think he was nine and a half, ten, ten year old deer. He was ancient, you know. His body, his teeth are worn off. I mean, just an ancient deer. That's a that's so anyway, stud too. It's yeah. a Sonora bug, right? Yep. Dark, they got dark. those capes. I've told her they always. We just barely hunted down on the border, like mm -hmm. Phoenix. And you can, man, there you can see that snout. Mm -hmm. It's so white, and they get the rings just like an elk, you know. Yeah. Really cool capes. They're always ratty Let's like that. Let's see if my daughter's in the lake. Look at this line. Yeah, you come. <laughs> That I love. That's the bucket just shot. That thing's a stud. Yeah. He's cool. Look at the mesquite. He looks like he's just in the char like charcoal or yeah, something. Yeah, he's cool. I mean, he's just one of those deer who's so much bigger. Two years prior. I mean, so he's a downhiller too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man. Deer was ancient. Just ancient, <laughs> but. Uh, Cool stuff, you know. So yeah, I just my kids get something. Then down at the office, we've got some some more big deer down there. But anyway, it's a dirty garage. But yeah, I just him upside down. No <laughs> man, this is like there's a closet of the horns. Right. Yeah, so I oh that my. Deer, that bull in the next one, and that's a pair of 420 sheds that we killed on the governor bull. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. 
So the sheds are the left set? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a, a, I've got another set of sheds that have on him too. He's four. Oh my gosh. Oh my right? gosh. Look at that. Look Cute. at the fits on that thing. Yeah, 22 inches. Is he, what is he, 420? Yeah, he's 425 or 420. Dude, that's. I mean, so, I mean, in that, I've got another 400 inch set off of him. So, we found the sheds. The unit, the unit wasn't open yet. Oh, wow. We ended up the unit open by an auction tag, killed that bolt. And he scored? And he scored 420. Oh, so you just kind of hung yeah. around? Those bits are so epic, man. They're awesome. When we killed him, we actually had cheaters on both sides and the fifths. It took it out of the fist. The fist one was long. Oh, really? It sucks into the mm -hmm. the it sucks into the length on it. Wow. That little deer, that's Marvin James deer that just, you know, he died. Oh, yeah. It's the legend, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's an old mount. That's cool. Yeah. It's old. Anyway, and then, yeah, I've got a couple of 200s up here. Just, I don't know. It's like, man. Yeah. 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 We got a back scratcher on that one. Yeah. I could sit here for 45 minutes. Is this a Mexico deer? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a straight up neck. Look that one right there. There's a non-tip. We see the cheetah broke yeah. out. That deer girl's like 214. Holy cow. You know? <laughs> this is him right yeah. here? Yeah. Yep. So what's his beat? Oh, it's being splits on the end. Yeah, it's being splits. Yep. Holy crap, man. Yep. That's just a bull that I know you. I just he went like, what did he go? 380s. I can't remember. Three, what did I tell you? Yeah, I think he said 380 is what I would always tell people. That's what he was, but you know, just a solid, just a solid, pretty bull. Yeah, tough yeah. out there, man. And that was a buzz loader? Yeah. Yeah. You're bad, right? That was actually southwest down there. Oh, cool. So, what's his, what's his beam like? Do you remember? I can't remember. Always, I was just curious because like, they dip so much. Everything waves, he's like fire, you know. It's, mm -hmm. He's got some serious character. Mm -hmm. Your cat's just roosting. Just chilling. <laughs> it's funny how like, you know, I kill a buck that's four or five with my bow and I'm like, that's a trophy. And then you see what? You see, it's like rich guys. There's there's rich guys and then there's mega rich guys. And that's kind of where you're at with mule deer. It's like, yeah. And you're humble. I mean, I'll brag for you. It's just, it's just amazing that one dude has killed so much stuff, and most yeah. of her bow kills. Yeah, a lot of them are bow kills. But, but I've killed however man. I just killed there. You just want tags, right? Yeah, it's just the best way. To, however you can get tags, and then the season that it takes to kill a big deer. So, you know, like a lot of these, I like archery. I like archery Nevada because it's August tip. There's nothing else going on. Sure, it's before Same Utah. Yeah, before. you know, ten days before Utah. It doesn't mess with anything. Right. So go kill something in Nevada. You pre-scout it for two months. You're on big deer. I will be on big deer in Nevada every year, no matter what, because I work too hard in the summer. Not yeah, every day. Yeah. Geez. Yeah. So our job. So anyway, if you do that, then you can come into Utah. You can hunt deer in Utah. And kill both those bucks in Utah. But Utah is one of those same thing. You can pre-scout in the summer. You can hunt it. The deer are in a pattern and they're killable. You can size stock Brutus ten times over. Wow. Before I kill him. And every day be back there. Would you blow stocks or would you yeah. back out? Sometimes I blow. See, Randy went and swirl. Randy told me, he said one time, like, one of the best things I ever learned, he says, if you know, if I can't see the buck inside of 70 yards, I'll back out. Or he says, if I'm not sure, I back out every time. And I was just going to ask you. Yeah, I, I don't have those rules of thumb. No, yeah. That's kind of, yeah, you can't generalize. I don't. I, I just, you know, if it feels right, basically I wait till the wind comes up. For the day, because thermal it, it stabilize. Yeah, they'll stabilize it. Now in the morning, it's going to swirl on sure. you. Sure. So if you go to stock on a deer right away, like your your stock is going to get blown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just got to give them. How long would you? Stay? Yeah, eleven o'clock in the morning. Start stocking. But you glass them, bed them, watch them till eleven. Do you? Do you? Do you? What do you? What's your take on that second bed? Do you ever watch them get up? Well, and, I watch them. Oh yeah, they'll get up and reposition. But usually it's not eleven yet. Mm -hmm. Usually it's ten. You know what I mean? They by the, that heat, it's it's a hundred ninety five. They're not moving. Uh -uh. They're in shade. They're bedded by eight thirty nine. Then they rebed by ten thirty. They'll get, they'll but you know usually in the afternoon, then you're good. But if they rebed, a lot of times they just move around the side of the tree. Yeah, they don't move far. Mm -hmm. Do you um? What's your number? One? I mean, I'll tell you right now. Like you, you you put arrows through them, but how do you find like? What's your what are the what are the factors like that you say, man? Okay, this is why I find so many big deer because. 
you have and not you killed them but you found them too like yeah. i've never seen deer like that like is it just where you hunt or you yeah it's just i'm just i do i i i don't know i mean that's all i do that is all i do what, what do you got to go through your life and say what do you do what oh, does yeah. zach do yeah well i mean maybe you water ski i watch sports you've got a whole list of things that you like to do i don't right. this is what i do this is all i do so if you do that, you could, you'd be the same way. Yeah. You have to figure out, there's big deer where you live. And you know guys that are killing them. I, I see them. Yeah. I know they're killing sure. them. And so you got to say, well, where can I hunt a tag every year so that when that, I don't kill that deer, I'm hunting the next year. Sure. Which is Utah Dedicated Hunter yeah. or whatever, yeah. right? And that's how I kill these deer. And, or Wyoming General or Idaho over the counter or whatever. Wherever's close to you, because you have to spend all summer doing it. Right, proximity is a yeah, huge so thing. Yeah, so like you, it's not feasible for you to go hunt where I'm hunting because no. I live here. You don't. Yeah. So yeah, you can come down here, and you're just gonna waste four or five hours driving. But I drive, I drive all day, every day, and glass in the morning, glass in the evening, run trail cameras in the day. <laughs> so, and then I come home because I got a family. Yeah. And I get up at four in the morning, I do it again. And I come home by nine o'clock, and then I get up in the morning and do it again. Oh, and you do it yeah. every day. But luckily, you know, I used to do it before and after work. So I had to work. I didn't get time off for hunting. Like I used comp time and all that crap. And I just, my wife was awesome and she knew what we had a plan and that it would all work out. And so she allowed it, man. She's, well, she earned super, this as much as I did. I was going to say, that's a huge She takes pride in this. I mean, these deer built this house. She okay. knows that. Yeah. And she it is it. a business in a sense. I mean, I know oh, it's it your passion, I mean, but. Epic Outdoors, hunting full, whatever I've done, the guiding, I'm still guiding a little bit, but, you know, good, significant clients. And that doesn't come when you don't kill stuff. No, it's, so, your credibility is just, your resume is like, you know what I mean? It's, but, you know, it's just taking, just taking a lot of time and energy. When, and that's not what the goal is. The goal is to kill big deer. My love is big deer. My love isn't. Everybody know when I kill big deer. My love is big deer. I'm Word will get out because guys like me <laughs> go scream about it. Luckily, you. thankfully, I've, we've, there's, we've made a living doing it. Thankfully. It's so nice. And so now I do have six days a week all day long. But, you know, back in the day, I was taking two tags a year on my general Utah and maybe one other draw tag, Colorado or something. Some years I didn't have a deer tag. 2004, I killed a sheep in Oregon, which was awesome. Yeah, it's the only tag I had. <laughs> you I mean, were really, you're a your guy. <laughs> yeah. So, so back in the day, we couldn't afford extra land on our tag or two, or or anything like that. And so I just guided heavy to continue to get my fix. Sure. On big deer. So do you get? I mean, do you get your fix watching other guys? Yeah. Well, the yeah, thing is, like, I, I've earned that deer. And, you know, they get to take him home, but I mean, I work all yeah, summer for sure. So to actually put our hands on him, no matter who kills him, is so gratifying. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we hunted that deer down, and we get to walk up. Would to you him. say killing him a lot of times is the easy part too? Like, I mean, it's getting there, yeah, getting in position. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, hard. Yeah. Even They're when hard. you know him. Yeah. <laughs> I've spent 20 days on deer that aren't in this office because I I never killed them. You know what I mean? Wow. So yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> So here's a question I had to ask you. You got a 270. Is that the biggest deer you've ever chased? Yeah, that's, that's cool. I thought you might have had a, a 300 or no, something that was no. out there. That's cool. That's cool Some to say day, you killed day, the biggest deer you've yeah. ever seen. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I haven't seen a bigger deer. But someday, maybe that, that I'd be lucky enough. But I mean, that's that takes a special deer in special conditions. Of, that's an unbelievable feat, and I don't know the desert areas that I hunt. I don't know if it's capable because they they are stressed sure. in a desert environment. Sure. So they're vulnerable in the desert, um, and you know, so I like to hunt the desert because you know it gives you a leg up, and they're tied to water and things like that. But yeah, without water, you probably never turn them up. Yeah. I heard they move a lot from where yeah. they drink in bed too. It's yeah, they will. Sometimes. Oh yeah, it's not like they oh, yeah, every five miles or yeah. something sometimes. every day or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Every day, every other day. Yesterday at the at the uh, shot show, at Rock and I walked by you were with Cam, and I just heard you say, "I'm not really a typical guy." And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't think you're a typical guy. <laughs> I'm a typical deer." Oh, I, I I'm okay with big typicals, but in, uh, I'll tell you, big typicals are hard to judge. You know, you think you got a big one, and it hits the ground, and it's nice. Yeah, but they're hard to judge. I did. I shot a deer this year that I 
overscored by 10 inches and I'm usually pretty safe and I just walked up to him and just a tiny body, tiny head, mm -hmm. just a little bit. That happens to everybody. I thought he was a lot bigger. I killed a deer in Colorado. It's just the saddest thing in the world. Had extras, but I'm glassing with 10s or 15s at 150 yards, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, dang, you know? <laughs> I, I, it's fine. I, I mean, you bring him home. But, you know, he could have lived. He had good genetics. Like, that. I feel bad about when a deer doesn't make his potential. I want deer to... I want deer to be as big as they can be. Sure. You know? Yeah, you, you like love them. Like you yeah. Just love, you're absolutely obsessed with them. Yeah. So I want them to be as big as they can be and awesome as they can be. And so, but you kill them when you see them, man. If you find a big deer like that Idaho deer, he could have probably been a freaking monster the next year. I mean, he's 220, but I mean, look at his genetic potential. Oh, yeah. He's lightweight. I mean, yeah, he's thin. But I'm not going to be back there, so. You no, know, yeah, it's a rut hunt. Like, that's an accident. Yeah. You know? I don't know anything about the deer. I would love to know where he came from. What he ate. What he looked like sure. last year. What he looked like. You know history. You know, you just... I mean, I have no history. I just shot him. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. And, and you shoot him, and that's fine. But what, what you, what's really fun is putting a deer on the ground that you know for a couple years that's or something. So cool. It's like, that's hunting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. It's one thing to kill him. And, and I'll kill him with the best of them. I'll take a rut hunt in Colorado, whatever. Yeah. No problem, but I love hunting them down, and that's where the summer and velvet archery they're all easy, come yeah, in. Yeah, they're easy mm -hmm. to stay on. No, that's so, so cool. but yeah, if you clean out your life a little bit and really get focused, it'll happen to anybody. That's you got to have the right personality to be just driven and being willing to not kill, not go home, go home without one, and pass them, and not and go twenty solid days, like twenty days. Yeah, that's I don't, easier said than done. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I hear it, but I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, and it's one thing to hear it, and it's another. Go ahead and go out there and do it. Yeah, and not see it. And day or, two, and day three, yeah. and day four, and day five, <laughs> and six, and seven. Take a gas, take a gas. What am I non -stop. doing? What am I doing? Nonstop. Do you ever? I mean, you killed so much stuff. Or would you say your confidence is? pretty high or is it more just no i mean i would say like there are i don't really get buck fever anymore okay so that's pretty i used to get buck fever bad that's awesome yeah so i i and I, at times if it hits me wrong or if like if i'm if i let's say i was sitting in a tree stand which i don't do very often but i've done it once or twice or in a blind if i can see them coming in and it's anticipating you know it's going then down. i start to yeah, sure. get buck fever sure. i would get buck fever yeah but it's uh if I, if it's more of a spot and stock I'm really clean that way, but it's every stock's different. Everything's you always learn something, and they fail most of the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. even now it don't matter how many stocks you have. Did you say one in ten on average? Yeah, one in seven. One in seven. Yeah, you'll get an arrow off if you do, but it's brutal. <laughs> That's so. And funny. then you re, you know, relocate them, start back over. New, every day's a new day. They feed all Brush night. Brush it off. Yeah, they feed all night. They chill out. I mean. Then you work them again. They're, they're there for a reason too, you know. Like they're they're gonna come back. And yeah, they see him there all summer. You bumped him, but he, he might be tomorrow or the next day. But he wants. That's to the be thing there. about velvet archer deer. You you can hunt them regular. You can bump them all the time. If you bump one and you blow him so bad that you're just you know he's gone forever. Yeah. He is not gone. The deer will be back there feeding again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. That's just, the way it goes. What is it about them in velvet? I mean, I have my ideas, but what? Um, is it hormones? Is it? Yeah, a lot of it is probably chemical change. Um, oh, maybe their antlers are a little soft and tender. But I, overall, um, it's somewhat hard to live in 100 degree weather. They, and they know their water, they know their feed, and they know where they like to bed, and they just get into a solid routine. And no one's messing with nobody's, them for nobody's, nobody's nine messing months. With them. Right. And so, kind of forget. So you get that. And then once uh, the weather changes, it cools off. They shed the velvet, and October 1st comes, they can roam freely and don't have to water near as much. Yeah. Once every eight days. I don't know. Is that a lot less? Okay. And so they can go, like they can go and do stuff and not think anything about it. So I, I don't know. I don't know everything about them. I'm still learning. Pretty freaking cool, man. Well, I appreciate your time. I was, I was excited as hell like, to be able to line this up. I've always wanted to see your stuff. I've never seen like Expo, it's not as fun. Yeah, this is just, this is a glimpse of it. You know, I've got some, like I said, some other heads spread around a little bit because I can't fit them all. <laughs> it's here, like Muley you know. crazy in here. Oh, it is, yeah. It well, really is. Muley crazy, he's got a significant collection of awesome sheds, like, you know, uh, it's not like that, but but these are, you know, these are dear. They're I up there. I've been fortunate last few years. So. Oh, they're all, 
Super everything badass. everything you see is pretty much from 2003 till now. Good. So in 13 years, wow. you know, you're just a hammer, dude. Yeah. That is so cool. But it comes together. Once it comes together, and you start to get that confidence, and then you realize you got to figure out. Everybody has a different style. So you might like the high country. You can do it. High country's great. Yeah. I just don't have any of it here. That I mean, up on the Cedar Mountain here, it's just thick and tough, and sure. it'll be a lot tougher to hunt the same deer year after year. You know, I mean, guys are baiting them and stuff, and of course that changes things a little bit, but but it's just tougher. And so, but if you, you know, up where you live, if you just, you, you, there's big deer to be had, and you just got to figure it out and figure out your system and what you like. Yeah. You know, not, what I do is different sure. than what Randy Olin And there's does, lots or, of ways to do it yeah, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the one thing that killed deer is patterns. And if you, if they have a pattern, you can kill them. And so you have to figure and out. And the only pattern. way you learn it is by being there. By being out there. Patterns. And you have to put in the time. I mean, you know, I mean, you just got to figure out how to, you know, if your wife will let you take vacation off at X amount of time and work it out with your work and all those things. That's what I always Takes did. Takes serious had, sacrifice. Yeah, we never had family vacations. None of that stuff. None of it. So. Anyway. It's cool that you could, you know, not not admit it, but just, you know, accept that. And it's just like, and, and it's cool that you have a wife that understands, like, I mean, you're, you're in a, at some level, you're like an artist, man. You're. Yeah. It's your passion is your life. That's cool. Not many people can do that. No, no. To be able to turn it into a career is even cooler. Yeah. I so applaud cool. that. Like, so, so fortunate. Oh, I, so, I, yeah. I think community is awesome. It's an awesome place to be. And, and you know, I, I, I understand. I get the fact that, you know, how fortunate I am. And I, and I don't, it doesn't go unappreciated. I, I know how fortunate I am. I think it's just like, when I started, we didn't have social media. We didn't have anything. All we had was, was these. This is why these are still here. Oh, yeah. You know, I haven't even updated these. <laughs> 35 millimeter. Yeah, or whatever. We don't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Well, there should be a big TV here with just rolling digital phones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know what I mean? And that's what that needs to be turned into. Yeah. But, I mean, just like these guys, like Russ, I mean, these are just, this is, I mean, that's a 220 inch deer we got to put our hands on that I couldn't ever get a tag for that. Here's a 219 inch deer. You know, here's a 237 governor buck. Um, another 210 inch governor buck. I mean, this deer got away. <laughs> no this, is, this is this deer right here that was running with Brutus. Oh yeah. Right there yeah. in the corner. Brutus, you know. Look at the mass. Here's wow. that goofy bullet we shot when I was a kid. Oh yeah, he did get, that. Did, he did shrink up his oh, fifth yeah. a little bit. That's interesting. Those flyers are cool. Anyway, I mean, this is a 195 inch net, you know, and it just looks like a nice four point. Net. Oh, yeah. Official. Big boxy sucker. Yeah. Big it's head. Oh, very cool, man. I really appreciate your time, dude. Okay. It's Sounds been an good. absolute pleasure. Yeah. I told Rocky, I said, you have no idea what we're going to go see. Like, it's actually good. Yeah, than I I there's some of these, I didn't know about a lot of these. It's well, there's, cool. yeah, and there's, there's, like I said, there's others, but it, it's at the end of the day, you know, they're all just my favorites. I mean, I don't know. I just love them all and try to spread them out a little bit, but. Yes, sir. Dead and